The faith is not delivered unto them that receive the word under false pretenses. Matthew 13, 20 through 22 says, But he that received the word, uh, the seed rather, into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while, when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Okay? According to Hebrews 3.14, this type of person was never saved. It says, For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Our now, present tense, if future tense. Okay? So here we go. If the be if we if we hold fast the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Now, here's some scriptures that should concern people. First Corinthians 15, 1 and 2. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Yes, the Bible testifies. You can believe in vain. And we look at Hebrews 12, 14 and 15. It says, follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God. The Bible testifies you can fail of the grace of God. The faith is not delivered unto such people. These are people who've got religion instead of Jesus. Okay? They got they got carnal, they're offering carnal of the cursed earth in their flesh instead of the fruit of the spirit because of the born again spiritual resurrection experience. The faith is also not delivered to those who value this life more than their eternal lives. We just saw a glimpse of that. Now let's look at another verse, Matthew 13, 22. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and ye become unfruitful. Philippians 3, 18 through 19 calls these people enemies of the cross of Christ. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. What this means is that these are the people who value this world and love this world more than the next world, which is the kingdom of God. That's who these are. These are people who do not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved, 2 Thessalonians 2.10. The faith was not delivered to people who are tares that Satan planted among the wheat. Remember we talked about Zazanian last week, about the, the people who, um, this is a plant that looks like wheat until it matures and it's harvest time. You can't distinguish it from the wheat. A lot of people are very good pretenders. They get religion, and they're very good at making you believe that they're brothers and sisters, and yet they're not. It's a frightening situation. Folks, you have to make sure. Please, make sure you are in the faith and not just going through religious motions. Israel went through religious motions a bunch of time, and God nailed them on it. We have to make sure we are in the faith and not just going through the motions of being religious and going to church and doing the other things we know Christians to do. Don't you want to be in that number when the saints go marching in? You better make sure you're a saint. Anyway, let's look at that scripture about tares again. Matthew 13, 38 and 39. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Notice here, children of the wicked one. John 8, 44 says this. And he's saying this to people who, would, who, if you go back a few scriptures in John 8, they are revealed as 
people who believed on him. They essentially offered up a false form of belief. And yet, when he confronts them on sin, when he confronts them on, on their spiritual heritage, they argue with him. They do not accept the truth. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. These are not spiritually resurrected people. Ephesians 2, 1 through 3, gives us that indication. You hath he quickened, speaking to the believer. You hath he quickened, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. You're dead in sin. Wages of sin is death, as Romans tells us. We're in time past. You walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that's Satan. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. It's another scripture to consider in 2 Peter 3.16. They that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. They take scripture out of the context of the original author, and they try to make it sound like something that it doesn't say. That's what that means. They take it out of context. They don't give you the truth. It would be like saying, somebody said, well, you know, the Bible says there is no God. No. <laughs> when the context is, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Hello, somebody. I can know you can hear me. They who twist the scriptures to say things that the scriptures do not say in context will be judged by God. It says, unto their own destruction. The faith was not delivered to people who turn their ears from the truth. 2 Timothy 4, 2-3 For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heed to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Folks, shepherds, Old Testament shepherds. When they had a sheep who had flies buzzing around their heads, and they would get in their ears, and they would itch. There were two options. Number one, you pour oil over the sheep's head, which will drive away the flies and protect them. Two, you start scratching the ears. You scratch the itches. You don't put on the ointment. You scratch the itches. No oil necessary. You just keep scratching, and you keep scratching, and you keep scratching. Folks, oil is a representation of the Holy Spirit. So here's what the modern shepherd can do. When people's ears start itching because you got the, the beals above, the king of the flies, lord of the flies, flying around their heads, you have two options. You can either anoint those people with the word of God, the spirit of the word of life. You give them the word of God. Or... You tell them what they want to hear. Moving on. The faith was not delivered to false prophet wolves who tried to appear as sheep. Matthew 7, 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Oh, they're wearing the wool. They, may, they try to look like sheep. They try to make you think they are sheep. They try to bat, and what comes out is... Not right. They can even learn how to almost mimic the sheep. They're in sheep's clothing. Let me tell you something about sheep's clothing. In order to get sheep's clothing, if you're going to put sheep's clothing on a wolf, on a wolf, you have to skin the sheep. Hello, somebody. To make a sheep costume, you've got to skin the sheep. 
Acts 20, 29 to 30 says, As for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not stirring the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. After them, not after Christ. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself was transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. They try to look like true Christian people. These are not saints. They try to look like saints, but they're still people of the devil. They're deceitful. The faith also is not delivered to those who bring in damnable heresies, 2 Peter 2, 1 through 3. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall, there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. Evil. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be spoken evil of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. They still got it. It ain't dead. They're, they're the ones who are still dead in trespasses and sins. They are not born again. They are not spiritually resurrected. They are headed toward destruction. Feigned words. They're faking it. They are not saints. Because of these people, others who may have been saved if they had never met or seen the things that these people have done, turn around and speak evil of the truth. Well, I remember this one time I was in church and this pastor did this really, really bad thing and now I'll never go back to church again. Or that preacher over there, you know that church? And this happened to people in my family. Oh, you know what? They tried to make us sign a contract saying we would tithe. I mean, there it is right there in black and white. It's a contract. It's a legal document. Sign it. You want to be a member of this church? Sign this. I will give 10% of my earnings to the church. Now, I am not against tithing. Jesus talked about tithing. I am. No, I'm not against it. Okay? I am not going to preach a sermon that's not biblical. Before... Before there was even a law of Moses, people talk about, well, that was under the law, brother. No, before there was even a law of Moses, back in Genesis, when Abraham met Melchizedek, he gave him tithes of all. So I have no problem preaching the tithe. Jesus told the Pharisees, you, 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 you tithe of these little things, and, and yet you have left off the weightier matters of justice and judgment and truth and, and mercy. And, and then he, he tells them, you have done these things, without, and you should have done. You know, you should have done these things without leaving the other undone. What is the other that they shouldn't have left undone? Tithing. Okay, so I'm not going to preach, you know, an unscriptural sermon. Yes, you should tithe, but to put a legal document in front of somebody's face to, that says that as long as I'm attending this church, I am going to give ten percent. Listen to me. Listen to me, and you listen good. That's legalism. You should tithe out of your heart. You should give out of your heart. You should do it because you love God. You know, I have a lot of respect for, for a, a Baptist pastor friend of mine up in uh, Missouri. He told the people, if you cannot give to this church out of a willing heart, his exact words were, you keep your stinking money. I'm telling you the same thing. If you can't give out of your heart, it doesn't do you any good. But I'm not going to put a contract in front of you telling that, so, oh, if you don't tie to our church, we're coming after you. No, uh-uh, that's ridiculous. And the thing is, what's going on is that when pastors do stuff like that, and churches do stuff like that, you turn the people off. You have made them give out of necessity. That's unscriptural. Got caught up, sorry. Listen. Fake preachers bring in damnable heresies, and their end is damnation. 
The faith was not delivered unto those who preach a false gospel. I've been touching on it, I've been touching on it, and I've been touching on it. Here we go. Another touch on it. The faith was not delivered unto those who preach a false gospel. Galatians 1, 8 through 9. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, than that ye have received, let it be cursed. A curse means damned. Not saved. Not going to heaven. Not resurrected in the resurrection of the just. Damned. Going to hell. Eternal punishment. The gospel is not there for people to change. Folks, these are people who are not counted among the saints. And God's language is clear that these do not have true faith. 